Hello and welcome to another Hades tutorial. Um, in this tutorial we're going to be making a signature, well you already know that because you clicked on the link, but we're going to be making this signature here. Uh, I'll provide all the resources that is needed for this tag in the description on YouTube if you're watching this via YouTube. But uh, I made this for a friend of mine earlier on today and I really liked it so I says I'll make a tutorial. And I have a couple of notes in front of me and I'll go over them while I'm making the tag using the exact same method with the exact same resources and um, well yeah. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. So let's get to it. So make your new document and I chose a width of 450 and a height of 250 and I click OK and we're first going to make the background black. I always do this, just a habit, you don't need to. And then we're going to place in a render. So we open up a render we're going to use and we place it in. And again, and I, will, I always do this in my uh, tutorials my videos I do it all the time just couldn't duplicate that just for backup if you ever need to go back and change things and then size your render press and hold shift when you're moving that so it doesn't skew around because if, if you didn't press shift it would go like that there so hold shift when you're scaling it and looks okay now and click okay and then we will bring in a background I'm going to use this one here it's pretty cool Close this off. And now we're going to bring this to the very bottom. And move around till you find something that you like. Looks okay though. Um, now we're going to add a nebula stock. So uh, here's one I was using. And place that. And with this, we're going to set it to light. And just move around till it looks okay. Looks okay though. And Next we're going to add in some C4Ds, I'm going to be using two different C4Ds but I'm just going to work on this one here for the time being, um, it's pretty cool C4D, uh, that's actually good for this actual style as well, but when you bring it in, again I'm just going to make a backup of that, um, I will click show transform controls on the top one, and move it, scale it down, around till you're happy enough with what it looks like. I think it looks okay but there. See the flow will be going in this direction. Now duplicate this layer, so we're gonna use this about three times. And I'm gonna rotate it around so it's not repetitive looking. And there it looks okay. I'm actually going to drag this to the background because I don't like that little bit sticking out, I like the way it was. So I'm going to bring this underneath. See, can't see it now. There. And last time, duplicate it. Last time for background. And it looks alright there. Now we're going to move on to our next C4D I'm going to use this. Um, well I'm not going to be using all this here. But most of it anyway. But bring that in. And we want to use these little boxes. Well I do anyway. <laughs> um, looks alright there. Now I don't want all this over here so if you don't know what masks are, pretty easy. Um, well first I'm going to duplicate it because I'm going to use it once, twice. And I'm going to hide the bottom one. But you click this little icon and make a little box. Um, and if you choose black as your color and get your brush, you can start brushing and that will get rid of all that. Or you can, but, the, but the reason I say that is if you ever want to bring it back, then you get white and it'll bring it back. So that's mask. And then go back to your bottom one and duplicate it actually because you can use it once more after this. Um, we we'll move it around and put some around here. Sorry, sir. They don't want all them now. So I'm gonna mask them. And last time for this, go the background. Just 
しといたあのペッキーフォーカーはいダッシャーリブザーおっ使ってたマスクあのマスクオフレルバスでどうもダッシャーえ
signing off them C40s, so we'll increase the bush size a little bit. And we choose a flow of about 50. And we make a bush like that. And bush onto the C40s where you think the light should be shining through. Don't worry if you cover the C4D too much. Just fix for that. Alright, I mean, we don't have to worry about that either. Right now, when you have that, that looks alright though. We're going to add in some shading where the light isn't going to be. So, we make an earlier and get a black brush this time. Uh, we choose a size of about 180. And we'll increase the flow to 100. And where the light isn't, just make a little shade in the spots. And we lower the opacity to about, it looks that way, about 26. Now, if you look at that light now, it looks terrible. It looks like it's, it's off. So, what we're going to do, well, first of all, we're going to work with um, uh, the render m and And we get our black brush. And just make sure the brush isn't too big for and we just brush on them like that. Brush over. And we set this to overlay. Shit, I, I was supposed to make a new layer then. Yeah, make a new layer on top of your M&M &M layer. And then brush on them. Should have said that. And set this to overlay. And we lower the opacity a little bit. darkens them up a bit. We're not finished with this now. But then we go to our top light layer. We're nearly finished with the target now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a mask on it. And with a black brush, a mask. And with a black brush then, we are, we'll zoom in for a while. I always zoom in, it's, it's easier. We'll set the flow to about 50 again. In about 40 and around now. And we make sure the brush is nice and small and it's soft brush. And we start and decrease the flow a bit more. Yeah, 10. And what you want to do now is you want to just uh, brush over the C4D where the light's not going to be. So you don't want the light too strong, so you overpower the whole thing. You'll see when I zoom out now what the difference will be. like that there. Now uh, th all them C4Ds look very sharp so we're going to blur them. So we'll go to our bottom C4D and we go filter, blur, um, Gaussian blur and we'd set the radius to 0.5 and that's a duplicate of that actually, take that one. And again we go filter, blur, Gaussian blur And I'm going to set this one to 4.4. And I actually forgot to mask off them a little bit, so I'm going to go back up to the, the light layer. I'm just going to mask off them a little bit. Let's bring, bring them back so the light was too strong on them. So we go back to our C4D where we were at and we go filter, blow, and gauge and blow. And we, this one's kind of far back, so we'll set this one to 5. And 0.5, and click OK. And then with this one here, we will go filter, blow, gauge and blow again. And we'll leave the same. Um, this one's a bit closer, so we'll 
we'll make this as blurry. We put this up on 0.3. And again, we'll do the same with this one. So it's gonna it will be the same settings. So uh, the foreground, this one's gonna be closer. So we leave this one at about 0.2. Okay. Let's go. Okay. <coughs> Now when you have all that, we are going to add a stars um, a stars layer. So we bring in our stars. I want that load. There we go. Sorry about that. And bring this in and set it to linear dodge. And it's okay there. A mask off bits that you don't want. It's covering like his face and things support your foreground. You don't want your foreground to be covering. Okay, so next we're going to move on to some gradient maps. And the first one is going to be a black and white gradient map and we're going to set the luminosity and set the uh, opacity to 40. Next we're going to add another gradient map and set this to magenta orange and set it to overlay and the opacity to 10 percent and again we're going to add a gradient map and it's going to be like a dark blue to uh, uh, i'll show you the swatch it's going to be 294 b 57 and really dark blue over there and white and we'll set this to Overlay and change the capacity of 10 as well. Now, let me finish with the gradient maps. We will add one now, and it's going to be like a like a reddish to kind of like a, a weird bluish color. And it's going to switch very reverse like that. And we'll set to light. Um, we'll add a vibrance now. Um, we'll leave the vibrance at minus 11 and the saturation at minus 7. Um, next, we'll add a curves layer. So we put add our curves and we'll make a point up here. A point in the middle and a point here. And we're going to bring up our dark tones a little bit. So about there. Um, nearly finished with the adjustment layers now. We're going to add an exposure layer now. And we're going to set the exposure to 0.22 and the uh, offset to 0 0.0124. 0 0.0124. And the gamma correction to 0.92, so 0 0.92. So I'm going to add a little bit of texture now. Um, we make a new layer on top of all that and apply the image. To apply the image, you can go make a new layer and then click image and then apply image here. We're next we're going to go filter gallery and we're going to add a paint dubs layer in our artistic sense see this paint dubs and we're going to leave the brush size of one and the sharpness to one and click ok and we'll just leave it at normal and we'll set the opacity to 45 and we go again with another applied image but this time we're going to go ocean ripple so we're going to a filter gallery and choose ocean ripple it is a distortion and you want to mask everyone now but the background so we'll click on our mask we'll zoom in and we'll mask all the foreground effects like including our c4ds now so you just want this to be in the background Sorry if I keep seeing like I'm tripping over my tongue. It's very late. But I think you can understand me hopefully. Okay. 
Even them little bits, you want to ask them as well. If you want them, they look fucking weird if you did them. Yeah. So, after that we're going to add a colour lockup layer. And it's going to be a foggy night. And we will set your opacity to 70. Nearly finished. Two more layers. We first we're going to blur it. So we'll play here and make a new layer and apply it. And we go blur and Gaussian blur. And we're going to set the pixel or the radius to point 0 0.5. And click OK. Now click on your mask. And mask off your foreground and your closest effects. New layer and apply it, and then we go sharpen. And I'm going to fade the sharpen, so we'll go edit, then fade sharpen, and leave it at about 30%. So that's how I made the tag. You just add your text then. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it and uh, you understood me because I was waffling an awful lot there. But um, yeah, that's it. Well, that's the end of the tutorial. Uh, I hope you liked it and. Um, if you do um, have a crack at it, um, do post sure it comes in the link below and uh, in the description. Um, so uh, me how you got along. And uh, as well, if you did like the tutorial, do like and subscribe. It um, really helps the channel, helps me. And uh, uh, as well, you get to see my new upcoming videos because there's going to be tons more in the future. And bye bye. Thanks for watching.